What if I told you that one woman's determination and vision led to the unification of Spain and the discovery of the New World? This is the story of Isabella I of Castile, a queen whose legacy shaped the course of history. Isabella the Fun of Castile was born on April 22, 1451, in Madrigal de las Altas Torres, Spain. Daughter of John II of Castile and Isabella of Portugal, young Isabella's early life was marked by political instability and familial strife. At birth, she was second in line to the throne after her older half-brother, Henry IV of Castile, who was 26 and childless. Two years later, her younger brother Alfonso was born, pushing her to third in line. When their father died in 1454, Henry IV became king, and Isabella and Alfonso were placed in his care. They, along with their mother, moved to Arevalo. At age 13, Isabella was brought to court to be under the king's eye. The opposition to Henry the Sixth gathered around Alfonso, but after he died in July 1468, the magnates turned to Isabella. She did not play the role intended for her, and her wisdom led to her recognition as Henry IX's heiress in the Accord of Toros de Guisando on September 19, 1468. Despite these challenges, Isabella was well-educated and deeply religious, traits that would define her future reign. Her childhood was spent away from the court's intrigues, allowing her to develop a strong sense of duty and justice. When Henry IV died, Isabella was in Segovia, which supported her claim to the throne. She was backed by key Castilian nobles, including Cardinal Pedro González de Mendoza, the Constable of Castile, and the Admiral, who was related to Ferdinand's mother. Opposing her were supporters of Joanna la Beltranea, backed by the Archbishop of Toledo, the Master of Calatrava, and the Marquis de Villena, with military support from Afonso V of Portugal, who invaded Castile and betrothed himself to Joan. Isabella's first four years as queen were marked by civil war, which ended in her favour on February 24, 1479, defeating both her Castilian rivals and the Portuguese king. That same year, the death of John II of Aragon unified Castile and Aragon under Isabella and Ferdinand. Although Castile and Aragon remained de jure separate kingdoms until the Nueva Planta decrees of 1716, Isabella and Ferdinand's marriage effectively united their realms, setting the stage for the future nation of Spain. When Isabella came to the throne in 1474, Castile was in turmoil due to her brother Henry IV's mismanagement. Henry's lavish spending and failure to enforce laws led to widespread crime and disorder. Determined to reform her kingdom, Isabella prioritized justice and was known for her strict and rigorous approach, even more so than her husband Ferdinand. From the start, Isabella focused on restoring the crown's finances. Henry IV had left Castile deeply in debt, mainly because he sold off royal estates at low prices. To address this, the Cortes of Toledo in 1480 decided to reclaim these lands. An inquiry was held to identify and restore estates that had been sold without merit, enriching the royal treasury while sparing gifts to churches, hospitals and the poor. Another financial issue was the overproduction of nearly worthless coinage from numerous mints that had ballooned from 5 to 150 during Henry's reign. Isabella established a monopoly over the royal mints, setting strict standards for coinage, which restored public confidence in the crown's financial management. In terms of government, Isabella and Ferdinand didn't create many new institutions, but instead made existing ones more efficient. The royal household, the centre of Castilian government, was reorganised. While noble titles remained honorary, real administrative work was done by lesser-born individuals and senior churchmen, ensuring effective governance. Isabella's decisive actions and reforms not only stabilised Castile, but also laid the groundwork for a unified and powerful Spain. 
In 1492, Isabella and Ferdinand completed the Reconquista by conquering Granada, the last Muslim stronghold in Spain. The war began in 1482 and lasted ten years, with the Spanish monarchs recruiting soldiers from across Europe and employing advanced artillery. Key victories included the sieges of Ronda, Loja, Malaga and Baza, leading to the final surrender of Granada in January 1492. Isabella and Ferdinand entered the city, received its keys, and consecrated the principal mosque as a church. The Treaty of Granada promised peace for the city's Muslims and Jews. During the war, Isabella recognized the talents of Gonzalo Fernández de Cordoba, who would go on to revolutionize military tactics and shift the European balance of power. In 1492, just three months after conquering Granada, Queen Isabella sponsored Christopher Columbus's daring expedition to find a westward route to the East Indies. Columbus set sail on August 3, 1492, and discovered the New World on October 12th. Upon his return, he was celebrated as a hero, bringing natives and gold. This marked the beginning of Spain's golden age of exploration and colonization, in 1494, Isabella and Ferdinand signed the Treaty of Tordesillas with Portugal, dividing the non-European world, though tensions remained over territorial claims in South America. On September 14, 1504, Isabella withdrew from governmental affairs and died on November 26 of the same year at Medina del Campo Royal Palace. Her health had been in decline following the deaths of her son, Prince John, in 1497, her mother, Isabella of Portugal, in 1496, and her daughter, Princess Isabella, in 1498. She is buried in Granada's Capilla Real, built by her grandson Charles V, alongside her husband Ferdinand and other relatives, although she wished for her daughter Isabella's body to be moved to rest beside her, this was never done. The Capilla Real Museum holds her crown and scepter. Isabella Thaban of Castile, a queen whose reign was marked by profound change and enduring legacy, but what lessons can we draw from her life and rule today? Stay curious, stay informed, stay tuned to Era Shapers.